Right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present uh, COVIS today. I want to start by saying that this presentation was co-created together with uh, a fellow Open Knowledge Maps board member, Maxi Schramm. My name is uh, Peter Kracker and I'm the founder and chairman of Open Knowledge Maps. The motivation for COVIS, um, I think, can be very well summarized in this picture here. Uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, we have seen an explosion of knowledge on the topic, which on the one hand is good news because a lot of researchers are engaging with this area and they're helping us to curb and overcome the pandemic. But on the other hand, this also means that there are many more papers than anyone can read. Uh, more than 100,000 have already been published. And this makes it very hard to get an overview of this topic. And once you have it, to then keep it. And don't forget that in the pandemic, a lot of researchers switched to COVID-19 research overnight, often with uh, very little prior knowledge and training. And for them, it's especially difficult to understand how they can get into the topic, how they can identify the seminal work, the most reliable work, and really build a solid base uh, uh, with which they can start. And for this especially, but for also everyone else, we have developed COVIS, which is a visual tour that gives you an overview of the most reliable research on COVID-19. So we want to put you on top of that pile of paper and really give you a bird's eye view of the field, we want to help you identify critical areas, but then also dive into them and really find individual papers that you might want to read. The project was developed together with our partners from Refigure, and I would also like to acknowledge the financial support from EOS Secretariat for the project. Yeah, if you go to our website, openknowledgemaps.org slash COVIS, you can try out the tool for yourself. I'm now also gonna jump over there. And um, if you enter the website, you can see that we have uh, compiled the knowledge in a knowledge map. And um, here we have focused mostly on biomedical research. So you can see the key areas um, of biomedical research here related to COVID-19, immunity, vaccines, host biology, and so on. And once you've identified an area that you're really interested in, say it's this one on therapeutics, then you can zoom into it. You can see that we have not only the metadata for the papers here, but also um, comments from our curation teams to give you more context as to why you may want to read these papers. There are many different types of resources in the knowledge map from data sets, journal articles, preprints to reviews. And we've also included refigures. And this is mostly when a single point or a single uh, question cannot be answered by just any one paper. You might remember that in the beginning of the pandemic, there was a lot of um, controversy around hydroxychloroquine. And this is where the curation team has created a refigure. And this is a visual dashboard that compiles different figures, different outcomes from various papers, and also provides a synthesis of the findings. So I think with this tool, we have really created um, a good link between our two open source tools in that we provide you an overview. Then you can also dive into it and you can get the synthesis or synthesized knowledge on various key issues. The data is at the moment sourced from a spreadsheet. This is not the most open solution, but definitely the quickest one that we could implement because we really wanted to have a collaboratively curated space where the curation team can come together and decide which um, the most reliable research is and um, how they, uh, which one they want to include in the map. The curation team is headlined by the co-founders of Refigure, Grisha Goyar and James Aikin. And they work on this together with researchers and students from the field who are experts in this topic. But essentially anyone can join the curation team. Anyone can also propose resources for inclusion. Just um, fill out a form here under contact us um, and then we will get back to you. The design and development of COVIS was done by Open Knowledge Maps. And I'd like to just spend the last few minutes of my presentation to briefly say a few words 
about the infrastructure. Um, so as you know, we're a charitable nonprofit. Our goal is to revolutionize discovery of scientific knowledge. And we want to do that for science, but also for all the other stakeholders in society. We're an open infrastructure, so all of our services are free and open. Our offering includes uh, services such as COVIS, but also automated services that enable you to create a knowledge map on any research topic. We've included in, in integrated base and PubMed for this. And we've also created a service that works on top of open air and is able to automatically visualize the outcomes of research projects. We also have a wide range of training materials and together with our software, everything is openly licensed. We also have a wide range of training activities and community support and engagement programs. With this approach, we've become the largest visual search engine for research. Since May 2016, we had around a million visits on the website. More than 290,000 maps have been created. And we had more than 3,000 participants in our online and offline workshops around the world. We're a community-based initiative, so your support really matters. Let us know what you think. Provide us with your feedback. If you think that Open Knowledge Maps is useful, please introduce it to your students, to your researchers, to your colleagues. And if you want to sustain Open Knowledge Maps, then consider becoming a supporting member or a founder of our roadmap. All the necessary information is on our website. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, and comments that you may have. Thank you very much.